Hi, welcome to this tutorial on using cash register scanners to count your inventory in Booklog. In this video, we'll show you how to prepare for and perform a physical inventory in your store. Updating your physical inventory is a multi-step process, and we will walk you through each step in detail. As a broad overview, here is what to expect. First, you'll take a moment to organize your inventory for counting. You're going to be scanning each item in your inventory, so you will want to strive for efficiency. This video will provide detailed advice for your inventory strategy. You will be using handheld scanners to collect your inventory account, which you will then transfer into Booklog. Once all inventory has been scanned and uploaded, you can check for discrepancies and finalize your physical inventory count. For each person scanning, you will need a cash register scanner connected to a laptop or a mobile Windows device. It might be helpful to use a cart to set your laptop or tablet on during the scanning process. This will make the scanner mobile. Otherwise, you'll need to carry all the inventory to the scanner. You'll also need a method for transferring files from your laptops or mobile devices to the book log computer you designate for uploading. This could be a memory stick, or a network transfer, or email. Preparing your store and your staff for the inventory process is key to making sure the rest of the process goes smoothly. Your first step will be to label each section of your inventory. In this video, we'll refer to sections as fixtures, but in your store they might be shelves, racks, tables, etc. With the POS scanner, you'll scan the items and upload each fixture one at a time, so keeping your fixtures organized will keep your count organized. Label names should be short, easy to identify, and only consist of letters and numbers. For example, your first t-shirt rack might be T1, and your first textbook shelf might be Text1. The inventory data you collect will be uploaded into text files on a computer, which will then be uploaded into Booklog. It's important to have a single directory on a computer where these text files will be saved, so choose an easily accessible Booklog computer in your store that will act as your inventory HQ. If your store is large enough that you'll need to do your textbook and general merchandise count separately, consider setting up two computers a GM HQ, and a textbook HQ. As you might imagine, staffing your inventory count is crucial. Making sure everybody knows their job will help your count go quickly and efficiently. Scanners will be responsible for using the handheld devices to count inventory on each fixture. Each scanner will need to know which fixtures to which they're assigned. They'll also need to know which computer to visit for uploading. The uploader will be responsible for transmitting data from each scanner and uploading it into Booklog. This person should be at the inventory HQ, taking data from scanners and giving the handheld device report to checkers. Checkers will be tasked with finding and resolving any problem items that show up on the handheld device reports. Be sure you have a backup of your database, either from the night before or the morning of your inventory. You should not move forward with the inventory process without a backed up copy of your database and log file that is accessible to you and that won't be overwritten by future scheduled backups. Once you have a valid backup of your database, you can move forward with your inventory process. In Booklog, the inventory process starts in the Utilities menu. Click Utilities and choose Physical Inventory. To perform a physical inventory, you will start at the top of this window and work your way to the bottom. Your first step will be to freeze your existing quantities on hand so you can compare them with your count after the inventory is over. Freezing your quantities before starting your inventory allows you to generate an inventory discrepancy report after the inventory is over. 
It allows you to spot any items you missed during the inventory process, or items that had inaccurate quantities in book log, either because of shrinkage or because they weren't received. It also allows your text manager to continue ordering books during the inventory, because Booklog can use the frozen on hand values to generate each item's open to buy. After saving or freezing your quantities on hand, you'll zero them out. Then, the quantities for any items you scan and upload into Booklog will be added together to give you an accurate count. If you don't zero out your quantities on hand, Booklog would add your scanned quantities to the existing ones and would double your quantities on hand for each item. Zeroing out your quantities on hand can't be undone, and this is one of the reasons it is essential to have a working backup of your database before the inventory starts. Once your quantities are saved or frozen and cleared out, you'll be ready to start scanning and uploading new quantities. To begin scanning, you'll first need to plug the POS scanner into your portable Windows computer. Next, open Notepad. You will be scanning your inventory directly into the Notepad file. Now we'll take a look at how to follow these steps on the PC you designated for uploading. To open Notepad, go to the Search field at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen and type the word Notepad, then hit Enter. Now, let's talk about some scanning strategies that will keep your inventory process running smoothly. We recommend scanning each fixture in the same order. This will help the person who is checking each fixture locate problems later on. Booklog reports on the items you scan, and the report shows the items in the order you scan them, so that you can find problem items by looking at the items that surround them on each shelf. You might scan them left to right or right to left, top to bottom or bottom to top, just be sure each person with a scanner is consistent about scanning things in the same order. You should also decide whether or not to have your staff scan each copy of an item, or to scan the item once and then enter a quantity on the next line in Notepad. You can use either method, or both methods, even on the same fixture. Many stores find it convenient to scan each unit of an item unless there are more than four or five, in which case they will scan the item and type in the quantity on the next line of Notepad. Then hit the Enter key on the keyboard to go to the next line. When someone finishes scanning, they should save the Notepad file, name it after the fixture they just scanned, and send it to the relevant uploader. They can send the file by transferring it in the way that is most convenient, by memory stick, network drive, email, etc. In Notepad, click File and choose Save As. Save the file to either your memory stick or network drive and name it after the fixture you just scanned. To upload this file into Booklog, go to the Utilities menu and click on Physical Inventory. Click the Update from Handheld button to bring the file into Booklog. You will be prompted to locate the inventory directory that you created, where you will see your inventory file. Double-click on the file and Booklog will start importing the scanned inventory data. If there is a problem with your data, Booklog will let you know. Common errors include blank lines in the file, special characters, or invalid ISBNs. Booklog will indicate the nature of the error, which line in the file the error can be found on, and what data is on that line. To fix the error, close the Update from Handheld window in Booklog, then open the Inventory file from Windows. Scroll to the line indicated on the error message and manually correct the error. If the error was a blank line, delete the blank line. If the error message came from special characters or an invalid ISBN, physically locate the item on your fixture and note the ISBN or SKU. The barcodes in the file are listed in the same order as the items sit on the fixture. Replace the bad line with the correct ISBN or SKU. 
Once the error is corrected, you can import the file again through the same update from handheld process. As long as a file has no problems, the Update Inventory button will be active. Click this button and Booklog will update the on-hand quantities for all the items from the inventory file. The uploader's final job is to print a report of the fixture they just uploaded. This is called the Handheld Device Report and it lists all items from a file in the order in which they were scanned. If you have rental titles, you'll need to account for the quantities of those books that you own, but are currently checked out by students. The quantities that you upload will update your on-shelf quantity, but they won't represent your true quantity on hand, which combines your on-shelf quantity with your rented quantity. To combine your on-shelf quantity with your rented quantity, click the Apply Rental Quantity button. Booklog will prompt you to apply your rented quantities either from all your departments, a specific department, or quantities rented from a specific term. If you are only counting items from specific departments, or items from a specific term, you might select to apply rented counts from those departments or that specific term. Otherwise, click All Items and click OK. The checker should look over the handheld device report. In addition to displaying a list of items scanned and their corresponding titles and book log, the report will indicate any barcodes that do not correspond to an existing item in book log. These barcodes are displayed as none items with no author and a price of zero dollars. Nuns appear for a few different reasons. The item isn't in your inventory, the item is in your inventory under a different barcode, or the item was misscanned. The checker should go out to the fixture, locate the source of the barcode, and determine the nature of the issue. The checker should compare the scanned ISBN on the report to the barcode on the book, and write down the correct barcode number. The checker should also note the title and price of the item. To correct the none item, the checker will need to know why the barcode isn't in book log and correct it accordingly. Items that aren't in book log should be added to book log. Correct the barcode and quantity for items that are already in book log with older barcodes. Add the quantities to the correct items when they have been misscanned. Look the item up in your inventory by title. If you aren't able to find the item in your inventory, the item was probably never entered or received into your system. To correct it, look up the ISBN SKU of the known item and replace its info with the correct item data. If you do find the item, Compare its ISBN or SKU to what is listed on the handheld device report. If they don't match, it is likely that the barcode was typed or scanned incorrectly when it was originally entered into your system. It is also possible that the item's barcode has changed since it was originally entered. To correct this kind of NUN, you'll need to copy the NUN's barcode number, which is the correct barcode number, and replace the incorrect barcode number on your item. First, locate the none in book log and open up the item record. Highlight and copy the ISBN or SKU. Once it is copied, add the letter N to the end of the number. This prevents any duplication issues from popping up when you replace the incorrect barcode in book log. Make note of, and zero out, the quantity on hand for the none item. Next, 
go to the real item record. Highlight and paste over the existing ISBN, replacing the old, incorrect barcode with the new, correct barcode. When Booklog asks if you'd like to save the old ISBN as an alternate SKU, say yes. Now, increment the quantity on hand with the amount taken from the NUN item. Sometimes NUNs are caused by errors in the scanning process, and the barcode that was uploaded from the inventory file isn't valid. If this barcode number on the handheld device report does not match the actual barcode number on the item, you'll know it was misscanned. This is an easy NUN to correct. Simply look up the correct item in your inventory and increment the quantity from the NUN. Once your items have been corrected, you can safely delete the NUN records from your inventory. You can only delete items that have a quantity of zero, so if you haven't already adjusted the quantity on hand for your NUN items, do so at this time. Once you have scanned, uploaded, and corrected all of your inventory, it's time to check for discrepancies and finalize. The Inventory Discrepancy Report will compare your newly uploaded counts to the quantities you froze at the beginning of the inventory. This report can show you if you missed scanning or uploading any fixtures, or if any quantities were misentered during your count. Look for patterns or mistakes on this report and correct them accordingly in BookLock. Continue to run this report until you've reconciled discrepancies. Then, you'll be ready to move on to the next report. The Inventory Detail Report will give you the current values of your inventory, including quantities, cost, and retail. You can run this report to get a detailed list of your entire inventory or use the parameter screen to break it down by category, department, or vendor. This report is extremely flexible, and if you only need the numbers for your full inventory, you can run it by totals only. Congratulations, you're almost done. The last step is to clear the freeze on your inventory. This will remove all of your frozen quantities and clear your handheld device reports. So don't clear the freeze until you're completely finished. <laughs>